yeah, it's just very valuable. I'll, say, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sheila Maurice Gray. I play the trumpet and flugelhorn, and I have a band called Kokoroka. And yeah, we've been touring, and we have an album coming out this summer. Yeah, that's a good question. I started playing the trumpet when I was 12 and how I got into it wasn't in the most conventional way. I wanted to play the piano and I went to my my music teacher at the time and I was like, Miss Moore, please, I want to learn the piano. And she was like, no, um, I think you'd be great at a brass instrument. Um, which I was excited by that idea, but there were so many instruments to choose. So I just tried them all. So I tried the tuba, no, not the tuba, the euphonium, which was just too, it was too big. So I couldn't get a sound out of it. And then I tried the trombone, which I actually was really good at. But I was like, oh, it's too big and I can't be taking that around me. <laughs> so yeah, I just saw the trumpet and I could make it sound quite easily. So I, ch I stuck with that. And um, quite honestly, for, the, for quite a while, I just didn't really go to my trumpet lessons or I would go when it would suit me. So if I had a lesson that I didn't like, then I would go to my trumpet lesson. And that continued until I was about maybe like, um, up until year nine, year 10. And then I took it a little bit more seriously. And then, yeah, when I left school and I had to have, a, I didn't have a trumpet anymore, that's when I really took it seriously and I went to Tomorrow's Warriors. Yeah. So, um, I was 14 when I was introduced to Kinatika Bloko. Um, the school I went to was a school in Brixton. It was a girls' school in Brixton, which had a lot of girls playing like brass. And I remember this, there was this girl who was maybe like two years older than me, and she would go to uh, Kinetica. And every time she would come back, she would come back much better. And I was like, oh, what is this place? So um, I was invited and I went, and I was just in so much awe to see so many people playing their instruments and not just brass instruments so many people dancing so many people playing drums yeah it was just nice and the sound that that came from it was amazing and when I was 18 actually before then I was already introduced to Tomorrow's Warriors um, like in bits and bobs but when I was 18 that was like the right age to kind of naturally progress into Tomorrow's Warriors and yeah so I did Yeah. So one of my um, first trumpet teachers outside of school was a guy called Abraham Wilson. And one of the first things he said was, people will remember you not by what you play, but by your sound. And I think that really, really stuck with me. And that's what I listen out for whenever I hear a trumpet player is their sound. And not necessarily the instrument itself, like it could be brow, it can be dark. But it's more how 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 does a person sing through the instrument essentially, yeah. So yeah, I think growing up and having the luxury of having like um, all of these uh, uh, music or youth organizations, I felt really lucky. Like I wasn't necessarily from a privileged background, but to have that opportunity was really great at that time. And for the longest time, I had the yearning to, to go to music college. And um, I thought that that was it, you know, go to music college and that would be, you know, essentially that's the, that's the mark, in, you know, in making you a musician. And so, like, I went to art college and the whole time I'll be doing music on the side, but that would be the thing that I was kind of aiming towards. And then I finally went to music college and I was like, are you serious? This is what <laughs> I've been essentially kind of working my way way towards and I think music college is good for some people but for some people it's not and I don't think it was for me especially coming from art college which was so different in the style of teaching and I think um, a lot of the way a lot of how I learned music was very independent and maybe going to one teacher when I needed and I think that's probably the best best type of education for me personally and I think for a few other people as well
yeah, I think um, life is very, it's just very interesting because I feel like, you know, we all make mistakes and we all have things that are, that essentially take us on the journey. And personally, like there's so many things in hindsight when that happened, I was like, you know, it's probably the worst thing that happened, maybe not the best decision. But I didn't think it's taken me to where I am now, which I'm forever grateful. Yeah, I guess seeing people being creative is always going to be a catalyst to any creative. So I feel like it all feeds into, in each, into each discipline. Um, there's this famous artist that I really love, and his name is Christian McClay. And I really love how he, he's a musician, but he's also a very well-recognised artist as well. And one of his most famous pieces is like this 24-hour clock that he has, where he has all of these iconic films telling the time. And it's just it's just great to see so many different like forms of being creative essentially. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess um taking the time, I think, yeah, like you mentioned, I think at one point I was involved in many different bands, which I think was a great part of my my journey. But I think taking the time to kind of just solely do Kokoroko and put the time into it and kind of work out, we're still defining what it is and, um, or we're still on the journey to discovering how much we can do. And with that, I think, yeah, I think you kind of have to actively set yourself aside from everything else that's going on and figure out what you want to do as an individual. And when I say as an individual, as an individual, as Kokoroko, what is, ba what is Kokoroko as a band outside of? What else is going on? Yeah. My own personal music is not connected with, with Kokoroko. With Kokoroko, it's very much us as a group. Cool. And we write together. Um, and we're all creative in different ways, not just musically. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, coming out of, of lockdown, I think lockdown for us was really good, I think. Obviously, it was difficult um, for obvious reasons. Um, but it was really good to just to have the time to actually be be still and just actually look at things as they are and try and iron things out. And um, we had the opportunity to write an album during that time. And yeah, we got given so many good opportunities, like doing the proms, uh, BBC proms, which I think was really great. So I think it's now coming out of it, I think it's really nice to kind of go back to what it was before, but in a different way. And I, yeah, the lockdown is definitely part, it's something that I think was very valuable. And yeah, I've really, yeah, it's just very valuable. I'll, I'll leave it there, I'll leave it there, yeah. <laughs>
Давайте.